Hey guys, sorry I've been gone for a while. On today's show, we're going to discuss bandpass filters, why you would want them, when would you use them, and so on and so forth. That's right here, right now, on Ham Radio for Non-Techies. Hey guys, welcome back to Ham Radio for non techies where we try to simplify the ham radio hobby to get you to study for, pass your exams, and get you on the air as quickly as possible. Like I said, today we're going to discuss bandpass filters, but first, my name is Scott, my call sign is KI5MPL, and I run the channel here. Uh, so, before we get going here, please remember to subscribe. I've looked at my analytics recently, and I'm still showing about 79% of you guys that watch my videos don't subscribe. It's free. Just click the little subscribe button down below and hit subscribe. That way you get notified when I do new videos. I do videos all the time where I'm going to start doing more videos now. Uh, that have cleared up a lot of things. Anywho, so I went down, or I went online, and I've been wanting bandpass filters for quite a while. And I want to discuss what's going on here. So first of all, I got a bandpass filter in the mail. And this is one from DX Engineering. I went and looked at all the other places, the big three, DX Engineering, Ham Radio Outlet, and uh, Gigaparts. And DX Engineering is the only one that carries bandpass filters that I can find. So either they're having a hard time with supply chain issues or whatever trying to get these things, but either way, they're really kind of a pain to get a hold of. But DX Engineering got one out to me really quick, and this one is for the 17-meter band, and it works at two, up to 200 watts on this particular one. Very sturdy, very well built. Uh, it's got SO239s. I can get it off there. Yeah. See, it is brand new. Has SO two thirty nines on both the front and the back, and this is a non directional, so you can you can hook it up either way. Have that going out to the antenna and that going to your radio, or you know all the way around. Uh, so it's really doesn't matter how you hook this thing up; it just works and does what it's supposed to do. But let's get into what is a bandpass filter. Some of you might be brand new here and still have no idea what I'm talking about. So let's rock over to my desktop and check that out. Okay, so what is a bandpass filter? A bandpass filter is an arrangement of electronic components that allows only those electrical electric waves lying within a certain range or band of frequencies to pass and blocks all others. So basically, when you plug this thing in, this is for a 17-meter band, and it will allow me to transmit and receive on the 17-meter band, no problem. But if somebody else is uh, transmitting next to me on, say, on 20 meters or some other some other band, this should block out those frequencies and those those bands and not interfere with my transmissions. So that's the basic gist of it. So, okay, cool. Now, where, why, and when would I use one? So glad you asked. So a bandpass filter is a must-have if you're running multiple radios. And let me give you an example here. I have POTA and contesting here. A lot of times a bandpass filter is used by, you know, your local clubs, for like field day if they're doing contesting because they're running multiple uh, uh, radios in one spot. Now, I have personally found it useful because when I go out and do POTA with a couple of my friends, we have two choices. We can bring out one radio and one person has fun while the other guys sit around looking dumb, or we can all bring out our radios, all bring out bandpass filters and rock and roll and have a great day and all of us be on the air at the same time. Uh, so that's mainly the reason why I got them because a couple of people that I ended up going out with we end up having, you know, more than one person, more than more than one radio, and I need a way to where I can get on the radio and do stuff, and they can get on the radio and do stuff. We're not sitting around waiting for them to, to finish, you know, doing their their uh, activations or whatever. Uh, same with contesting. Like my club uses uh, uses a, a bunch of these things with their contesting uh, for field day. We set up one or two antennas. It runs through a multiplexer. And that's the other thing. It's the next thing here. Uh, it's definitely required if you're using a multiplexer. And a multiplexer basically allows multiple radios to work off of a single antenna. So say you had like a three-band hex beam antenna, and you had it for like, uh, I would say, 40, 20, and 15. So you'd have to have bandpass filters for the 40-meter band, the 20-meter band, the 15-meter band going to, each, going to each of the radios that way, and that, that may mean like 40 meter for one radio, 20 meter for one radio, and 15 for one radio, in order for you to operate on that uh, multiplexer and not interfere with one another being so close. So that's the main reason to have that for that. Uh, now, these particular ones that we have here are uh, available for all 10 of the amateur HF bands, and they come in 200 watt, 500 watt, and 1500 watt models in general. You can get a 2000 watt model 
which is available for main for main contesting for the bands of 160, 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10. So if you've got that kind of power available to you and you're going to be doing some serious contesting, the 2,000-watt model is available, and you might want to check that out. But I think for most of us, the simple little 200-watt jobber here will work just fine. Uh, the last thing here is these filters achieve over 60 dB of out-of-band suppression that virtually eliminates out-of-band noise and interfering signals. Again, like I said, this will pretty much uh, cut out any other signal around you except for what's on the 17-meter band. So unfortunately, if somebody next to you decides to switch bands, goes to 17, and starts keying up, you're definitely going to get interference from that because it will allow that that signal to come through, whereas on the 20-meter band, 40-meter, 80-meter, whatever, it will block those out for you, allowing you to transmit uh, freely. So with that being said, I wanted to show you guys, and again, these are easily available over at DX Engineering, and I found, here it is, here's one I've got, $129.99, and that's, you know, that's about the average price of these things, and you got to figure they have different ones for different bands, and they all run $129, so do the math on your own. Depending on how many bands you want, you're looking anywhere from 129 bucks to, you know, a few hundred dollars to cover all the bands you want to cover, and that would probably be for, you know, each person coming out that would have to get these things. So an, al an alternative thing I'm trying to do now is I'm working with some people and we're going to try and figure out how to build uh, bandpass filters. I don't think that what's inside this box, I mean, I know there's a lot of toroids in here that are wrapped and probably some other, you know, electrical components and th things like that. And some kind of a board, which you can see they've got it all screwed into this board here to get everything, everything nailed down and be, you know, stable. Uh, but I, you know, honestly, I think there's only about maybe 30 or 40 bucks worth of parts inside of any bandpass filter. So you're paying for the manufacturing, the name, blah, blah, blah. So if uh, we can figure out how to come up with a situation or a, a, come up with a schematic or something to allow you guys to choose your band, download said, said plans for that build and go get them and we can find sources for all the parts. We're going to try and figure out a way to get it so you guys can build your own bandpass filters and save the $130. Uh, if you want to just try one out, I'd, I'd definitely say go get one. They're definitely cool to have. And like I said, I, I'm still waiting to go out and play with this. So I think what I'd like to do is maybe go downstairs real quick, grab my screwdriver set. I'm going to pop this thing open against my better judgment. Uh, it might be stupid to do that, but I think I want to pop this thing open and look inside and see what's inside of a bandpass filter. So stick around for a minute. Let me get this, on, on, get this thing uh, disassembled, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so now what I've done is I've gone ahead and removed all the screws. Let's switch over to that cam real quick. I removed all the screws. There was uh, five on each side that hold this thing open. And, of course, this is the whole unit and all the components up underneath it. So we're going to turn it upside down here and remove this cover. And that is what is inside of these bandpass filters. That's quite a bit of stuff, actually. It uh, doesn't look as simple as some of the other ones I've seen before. You have lots of toroids in here. I'm just counting uh, one, two, three, four, five, six toroids. And it looks like series of different little types of capacitors, resistors, and all kinds of stuff within, in, in, within the entire thing. You see how they're all uh, glued down. Each of the toroids has its own set of components, but then they're also anchored down the bottom here with some kind of a, a, a little platform to put the, keep the toroids uh, up in the air. And then they have a zip tie and then hot glue to keep everything where it belongs. So they are pretty complex, or at least this particular one is pretty complex. Uh, does not mean that they'll all be that way. But I wanted you guys to at least see what's inside of a bandpass filter to get a better idea of what it is you're up against if you want to build one. Now, if we can find cheaper, easier plans, maybe it doesn't require as much stuff as you're seeing here, you know, uh, but maybe it does. Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll have to figure it out, and if we come up with a, with a viable solution for you guys, we'll definitely let you know. So I hope that helps out a little bit and gave you a little bit more insight into how a uh, bandpass filter works, um, you know, and then with the intricate parts that, are, that make up a bandpass filter. Like I said, I've seen other ones that were a lot simpler. It was basically, you know, two SO239s, a toroid, and they wrapped um, copper uh, wire in a certain pattern and a certain number of turns and a certain thickness, and that went into a couple different little uh, electronic components, and that was it. And those bandpass filters worked just fine. So there's something different about this one. I don't really know what it is because I don't have the knowledge of what 
goes into building one of these just yet. But like I said, as we find out more information, we'll definitely uh, let you guys know more stuff about that. Anywho, um, well, that's pretty much the spiel on on bandpass filters. You know, what do you guys think? Do you own any bandpass filters? Have you had any experience with them? Um, are you looking to get some? I mean, do you do you still not understand what it is I'm talking about as far as why you'd want them? Uh, these are all you know good questions to, to ask, and you know I'm willing willing to answer anything you got. You can always hit me up in the uh, in, in my email, uh, hit me up in the comments. You can go to hamradiofornontechies.com. And in there, I have a contact form. I get, you know, I get mail from you guys all the time. I try to answer them as quickly as possible. And if I don't have the answer, I'll go research it and find another expert who knows the, what they're talking about and get you an answer that, that works. And hey, once again, guys, if you like this video, please remember to subscribe down below. Click on the little bell. Be notified when I do new videos. Also, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. That helps the YouTube algorithm show my video to more people that are interested in ham radio-related videos. And until then, guys, this is Ham Radio for Non-Techies, and we are clear.